So I want to invite you into my process of the secret place today. And before, I want to set up a little bit about who am I? Who is Ravon? What am I doing here? Where did I come from? And let, let's start. Um, I'm actually wife to Jason Calderon, who leads worship here on Sunday, sometimes our music director. So if you don't know, um, I am a mom to three kids. Um, my oldest, her name's Harmony. She just turned 12 last week, and she is a competitive softball player. Um, I admire her crazy determination. Um, about eight months ago, she said, I want to be a catcher. And uh, I'm like, you're nuts. You know, like they have a 60 mile an hour ball coming at their face and, and they got to catch it and frame it and their thighs got to be huge, right? They're real buff. <laughs> and she's like, I want to be a catcher. And God, there, there was so much favor on it. She now trains with the gold medal Olympian for catching. Super cool. In our area, Roseville, we have a gold medal Olympian here. Um, my second child, his name is Kingston. Uh, three years ago when we moved here, we moved here for Kingston. He was actually diagnosed at the time, six years old, with uh, called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And what that meant was his body was producing too much spinal fluid, and it was attacking his own brain. And so he was having uh, crazy hypertension headaches is what they would call him, saying that there was a tumor on his brain, but it was not real there, he, really there. So he would uh, vomit from the pain and until we put him on morphine, like a morphine drip. And so he was with neurologists, and a, we, we had years of testing happening, and his neurologists were here. And so God opened up the way. We moved here. And since then, Kingston has experienced miraculous healing. He was moved off of all medication. He's, yeah. So praise the Lord. It, it was a real rough journey in the time moving away from where, where our home church was for 20 years up here seemed like crazy to us. And, and God used it to see some crazy healing in his life. And then our last, our, our last and definitely last is uh, Peyton. Anybody who has the third child knows that they're the ones who say, we don't want any more kids after this one. <laughs> she's feisty. She's sassy. I actually had a parent teacher conference a couple weeks ago with her teacher and everything blew my mind. She said, um, she's the only student in my class who got outstanding on every single area of behavior. And I was like, Peyton Calderon? Is there a P.E. Peyton? Or are we talking about the P.A. Peyton? That's my Peyton? She's like, no, she's the only one. And I'm like, that, that seems crazy to me. She's like, she opens the door for other kids. She's kind to other kids. She helps friends. Like, people make friends. She's a connector. I'm like, okay. I didn't know that about her. <laughs> That's my Peyton. Um, I am a full-time student studying, um, um, earning my bachelor's in psychology as long as, as well as being a mom. I am a spin teacher. I like to teach cycling. I went on a fitness journey and a health journey starting about five, six years ago. And I met the Lord while riding on my bike. <laughs> and he was like, this is your thing. Run with it. And so I'm a spin instructor. I work for Three Strand Shop, working with um, survivors of human trafficking and selling the jewelry that they make. Um, and I'm a friend. I'm a daughter. And I'm a daughter of the king. Lover of community. And I am a preacher. <laughs> um, I actually, this is knocking some dust off for me. I actually haven't been behind the pulpit for about seven years now. And the Lord used my time back home before we moved here um, in youth ministry. And I, I love youth. I love preaching to youth. I love hanging out with youth. And my heart was youth for a good 10 years. And we saw a huge youth revival. We were in a small community and... At one point, we easily had 500 youth attending youth group. 
And the Lord moved. He set people free. We saw gang members, like kids raised in gangs, leave their, their rags at the altar. We saw healings. We saw signs and wonders. We saw the joy of the Lord. And the amazing thing about the joy of the Lord is when he comes and brings laughter, he heals and he sets free. And we saw kids raised in trauma, like completely set free. And and we saw this for years, guys, years. And these kids brought their own parents to church. And we saw just a wonderful move of God. And I was I was baffled. <laughs> I was like, what is happening here, Lord? What, how am I being used to see this happen? And I, I was just available. I just made myself available. I remember my secret place with the Lord growing up in the church. And I remember like going into my closet and I remember just spending hours with him. Um, my husband, Jason, he tells his story about he would bring his guitar in his room and he would stand next to his bed and he would just play. And he's like, I'm just going to play. I'm going to sing to God until I fall out, until I'm done. <laughs> and he did. We spent years like that. And then we see this huge youth in the, the move in the youth ministry and the Lord stopped it. All of a sudden, he stopped using me. And I was like, what's happening? And he halted a season. And he, we were pregnant with Harmony. And he was like, it's time to raise your kids. And my secret place looked a little bit different when I got an infant in the house crying all night long. And I was confused. I was like, this confusion came with guilt. I'm, I'm a busy mom. I'm doing all these things. And the Lord was, I would look back on my day and I was like, where did I even spend time with God today? Like, did I talk to him? Um, I remember times where I would be doing the dishes and that was the only time that I talked to him. And I felt, I, I really felt guilty. Matthew 6, um, 3 through 4 talks about um I'll just read verse four. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you. And I was always like wondering why my secret place looked so different. Why? What did it look like? Was, did I feel shame? Was there guilt? Did I spend enough time with him? And, and, and let me tell you, it wasn't because I was sitting on social media endlessly scrolling and getting caught up, but I, I really had, was, I was genuinely busy. I was genuinely busy. You guys have friends that, um, you talk to like once a year and once you, you, call them. It's like you picked back up right where you left off. Uh, so I have those friends and, and it would be like, I, I felt like my relationship with the Lord was in that moment. It, it seemed similar to that. Like, I know I'm your friend, but it feels like I haven't talked to you for a while. But in that time that I would talk to him, I always felt like there was intention in that moment. Just like when I would pick up the friend and pick up the phone and talk to my friend that I haven't talked to in a year, when I talked to her, it was intentionally, right? Like we had stuff to say, we had memories to talk about, and we're moving forward in our friendship. Last week, I got to hear um, a friend speak. Her name's Callie. She's uh, with Bethel Music, recently just went through a loss of her two-year-old daughter named Olive. And she shared about this, this moment when she went to South Africa and she's ministering in South Africa. And she's, she said she just got to her bungalow and she's in her bungalow and she's jet lagged and she's really tired. And outside of the bungalow, she hear, hears a lion, like a real lion. And she's like, oh, heck no. Three o'clock in the morning, I hear a real lion. I'm not going to be able to sleep, right? And so she starts praying and just talking to the Lord out of really, really being scared, right? She's just like, oh, what am I going to, what am I going to do? I'm scared about this. What's happening? And, and the Lord starts talking to her about the people of South Africa. And she's like, okay, Lord, uh, Ka uh, Callie's a, a music writer. She writes a lot of worship songs. And the Lord was just saying, like, I love these people and talking about the, the people of South Africa. And she's like, wait a second, wait a second. You know, like, 
I know that you're talking to me about this because you want me to share it. And so let me write some songs. She's getting everything down. And the Lord said, I don't want you to do anything with this. He said, I just want to share my secrets with you. And the word challenged me because I, for the moment, I knew in this crazy season, I wanted to be trusted with the Lord's secrets. If there's an exchange in my relationship with him, if I'm intentionally communicating with him, there has to be a time where he trusts me with his secrets. We want to go to him. We want to say, it, it's, it's supposed to look this way. It's not right. Something's going on. And, and, and he's just like, I just want to hang out with you. I was carrying shame and guilt in the middle of doing dishes because I hadn't spent time with him that day. And he's like, I'm just hanging out with you. I trust you with my secrets. Does he trust you with his secrets? The secret place of God is a friendship with the Lord. You see, I had felt like I had pulled away from preaching for a season. And then a couple weeks ago, Brandon invited um, a couple of us to go to preacher school in Reading. And um, it, it was phenomenal. But how many of you know that it would take an act of God to get a mom away from her, her household for four days straight? <laughs> and that every time that mom leaves, everything seems to go wrong. Poor dad, right? Yeah. And um, it was definitely an act of God. Jason had four days off straight. He didn't even have to ask for the time off. But my oldest daughter's birthday landed in the middle of the week. And I felt like the odds were stacked against me, even though he had four days off straight. And it was, it was a hard decision for us to go after talk and after Harmony, you know, figured out what she was going to do for her birthday. And we were still going to make it really special. Jason was like, it, you need to go. Let's go. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So we get up. I am on my way there. 30 minutes out and our, and my car breaks down. My 2019 Honda Civic breaks down. What 2019 car is going to break down in a year? Well, mine did. Yes. First thing. And I'm like, you know what, Lord? Like, I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to be there today. I don't know what's happening here. Well, yeah, I'm supposed to be there. And so I get there. Jason meets me, he gets the car fixed. I'm on my way. Miss the first session. Anyways, on my way there, I get there. It's really good, but I really needed the God of the individual. I needed him to meet me. I needed something like special for me. I needed him to be like, you are a preacher. Like you're doing this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And so I really, I mean, there was beautiful moments. I, I genuinely fell in love with the word of God again. And it wasn't enough, guys. It wasn't enough. Wednesday night, I got called from a friend on Harmony's team. Um, we could have the keys player come up, I, I think, Josiah. Um, Wednesday night, I got a call from a friend on Harmony's softball team, one of the moms. And, and she's like, Harmony got hit in the face. And it's pretty bad. And I was like... This is the first practice I had missed in a year. And I was, she got hit in the temple. She fell down. She had a mild concussion. It was pretty bloody. And I'm FaceTiming her, and she said, Mommy, I want you to come home. And I was broke, guys. I was broke. This, this wasn't what friendship with the Lord looked like, right? I'm like, you want me to be a preacher? You want me to get back up here again? And then my kid just got hurt. So I'm asking, I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay. I'm going to ride this out. One more day, I'll go home. And then Thursday morning, Jason calls me in Kingston, got one of his bad headaches again. 
And I had walked in healing with Kingston. I had seen the miraculous and then a headache comes. And that, that on Thursday, they were moving in the, the, the Holy Spirit at Preachers. They were moving with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord was really calling women back to the pulpit. Not so that men would be pushed aside, so that men would pivot. The Lord was calling women. And it wasn't enough for me. And I was sitting in a session, and Callie's talking, and I was crying. I was like, I don't even really want to be here, Lord. I don't, I don't know if I want to be a preacher again. And I heard him say something about a paintbrush. And Callie looked over at me. And she was like, I hear the Lord telling you to pick up your paintbrush and start again. And that was it. It was my moment. That was the secret place with God. And in a moment, he could come and be the God of the individual. He'll come and meet you exactly where your needs are. And he'll say, here's my secret. Do we keep his secrets for 20, 30 years? Are we quick to tell? I feel like today, the Lord is calling us to pick up our paintbrush and start again. Maybe your relationship has looked skewed. Maybe it's seen through some different lenses. Maybe he's just asking for the secret place again. Maybe he's saying, I want you to fall in love with my word again. You remember when you asked him in your heart and you were so on fire. And year, it's been years of wear and tear and you're tired. If you could stand. I'd like you to close your eyes and get in a place of position of receiving from the Lord. With all authenticity and uh, honestly, so genuinely, the Lord doesn't come with shame and guilt like I felt for so many years. He comes gently. He comes humbly. And he's asking today for you to pick up your paintbrush and start again. And in whatever capacity that looks like, I'm talking to the genuine secret place with the Lord. A genuine intentional exchange with him. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your fresh word right now. And I thank you that you're asking for an exchange of friendship. And I'm speaking right now. And I say, son, I say, daughter, I want friendship with you. The Lord is saying he wants friendship with you. And an intentional exchange. And I am asking, Lord, that you would bring your son and daughter into a season of intimacy with you. Papa, we want to be trusted with your secrets. <laughs> I want to be trusted with your secrets. 